There's something about being there in the very beginning. It's just, it's almost overwhelming when you realize how, how it all started in, in such a, just a small way and grew and grew and grew. The American Cancer Society Relay for Life began in 1985 when Dr. Gordy Klatt circled a track for 24 hours to raise $27,000 for the fight against cancer. While he was on the track during those 24 hours, he envisioned a 24-hour team relay event. I remember thinking, gee, this could be something we could do all over the state of Washington because the Washingtonians kind of like to do this sort of thing. We could raise maybe, you know, potentially $100,000 doing this. 25 years later, Relay for Life events have raised more than $3 billion in the fight against cancer and are held in more than 5,000 communities across the United States and in more than 20 countries around the globe. For far too long, cancer has been claiming the lives of millions, young and old alike. Clarion University has been doing its part to eradicate this merciless disease. For the past 11 years, Clarion has teamed up with the American Cancer Society to host Relay for Life to help in the fight against cancer. Since then, Clarion has raised over $20,000 in helping find a cure. participate in Relay for Life because basically it's for down it's for a good cause and I and I come here every year four years unfortunately it's my last one but I'm enjoying it it's having fun taking a lap around and basically just remembering people who are fighting it or have lost a battle to it. People should participate in Relay for Life because it brings out um, an inner strength in everyone I think and um, my grandma, six years ago in August, passed away from the terrible um, thing that's called cancer. And um, to this day, I miss her every single day. And the first time I relayed was actually here at Clarion University. And um, it made me feel so special to be helping a cause that helps people all around the world. And the ceremony here is absolutely amazing and it will touch anyone's heart. People should participate in Relay for Life because that's the only way we can actually get the awareness out to fight this disease. If it wasn't for Relay for Life events, people wouldn't know about it. We wouldn't be able to fundraise money, so there would be no education, there would be no fundraising, and there would be no research done to actually fight this disease. The sole purpose of Relay for Life is to find a cure for every cancer known to man. Failure is not an option. From speaking with several Relay for Life participants, they understand the importance in aiding the fight against cancer. And Clarion University shows no signs of slowing in its efforts to find a cure, especially when one of its own has battled this deadly disease and came out victorious. After waiting two hours, the doctor finally came in with the results. 
results of my scan. I could see the nervousness in his face and he said, there's a giant mouse in your uterus, we can't handle this, you need to be sent to Pittsburgh. As my heart sank, I simply covered my face with a blanket and began to cry. I was transported to the Key Women's Hospital. The doctors performed many examinations and couldn't figure out exactly what was wrong with me. I screamed in pain and couldn't stop crying as they continuously pushed on my stomach, attempting to figure out what was wrong. As they pumped my IV with pain medication, I became restless, dizzy, and my body couldn't tolerate the meds. Ten hours went by, and the B staff finally did an ultrasound in my stomach. As I looked at the technician's face, her eyes became big as she ran the probe over my right side. My ovary was massive, the size of a grapefruit to be exact, and it needed to be taken out immediately. Whenever my doctor got my results, he rushed me in for emergency surgery to remove my ovary. The surgeon came in to consult my family and I the next morning and said that my ovary had been twisted, filled with blood, and died. In positivity, he told me I'd be all right, but they sent my ovary away to be examined. With a sigh of relief, my family and I headed back to Knox for a relaxing day of recovery. One week later, my phone rang early in the morning and I answered it with a groggy voice. Chelsea, he asked, yes. This is Dr. Weisenfeld from the Gay Women's Hospital and we received your pathology report from the lab. Nervous with anticipation, I asked about results and he responded, you have cancer. When I was first going through cancer, um, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. When I went into the doctors, they were throwing out so many terms and so many words that I didn't understand. And when I actually started, I realized that all chemotherapy is, is drugs going through an IV, going into your veins and your system. And it makes you so tired and it wears you out. But whenever you, you're done and you finally realize what you went through, you realize how much of a strong person you are. If I had the opportunity to speak to somebody who is going through treatments right now, I would tell them that maybe in the beginning it's really rough and you're not quite sure you're going to make it and some days you don't want to make it, but down the road you're going to be glad that you did and you're going to be glad that you stayed strong because in the end you couldn't ask for anything better.